What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are at the world premiere of the new facelift version of the Audi RS e-tron GT. This is a performance model which means that you have a lot more power, 925 horsepower. But today we're going to start on the Autobahn. So I'm going to get in, do a couple of runs on the Autobahn and then we will have a nice B-road and, ooh, raises up. And then we will have a nice B-road and I'll show you the interior and the exterior. So that's what we're going to do today. Starting with the Autobahn. So we're going to switch to performance mode, which is the most aggressive setting. In this setting, it adjusts the torque drive, but also the suspension, the steering, the traction control, stuff like that to give you the most dynamic experience. And speaking of suspension, big jump here. Speaking of suspension, we also have the new active two chamber air suspension which is just magic it leans into corners and it also levels you when you're uh, accelerating or braking so here we go onto the autobahn this is uncharted territory as you can see this is not our usual spot but here we go full throttle oh that's quick so it seems like we have an issue with the fake sound that's coming through the speaker behind me so don't mind that I don't think it's normal that it sounds like this but this is 262 3 that, <laughs> it's so comfortable brings me to a slight downside you've got 925 horsepower and over a thousand newton meters of torque top speed is limited to 250 kilometers an hour for both the RS e-tron gt and the performance version it's 245 in the regular s version and i think the performance version especially should have a higher top speed uh, we asked them but they said it's just because this is an e-tron it's an electric car uh, they don't raise the top speed it's not technically limited or anything like that it's not heat related uh, so yeah i think that is a little bit of a downside especially considering that there are other manufacturers that have a higher top speed in their top models. For instance, we drove the uh, Trek Pack Tesla Model S Plaid, which did 328 on the speedo uh, without too much effort. So yeah, it, it, it would have been nice if this top dog performance model would have at least like 280, maybe 290, something like that. To have the best, 100 to 200 km an hour performance you need to use launch control because that's when you have the overboost max power uh, so let's have a look at that right now So one of the goals when they were developing this new e-tron performance was repeat output availability. So being able to do this, what I'm doing right now, multiple times. Um, 
and keeping consistent performance. So they have a newly developed rear motor, which is 10 kilos lighter and more powerful and more efficient. This performance model, as I said, 925 horsepower, 1027 newton meters of torque. You've got the regular RS e-tron, which has 857. And then you've got the S e-tron, which has 680 horsepower. Uh, so they all have a lot of horsepower, basically. They all have a lot more than before as well. And compared to the previous RS e-tron GT, that car had 650 horsepower, around 650. Uh, so it is a 280 horsepower increase compared to the last one, which is very, very impressive. Range has also increased by more than 100 kilometers for all models. So uh, the S does 608 WLTP up to 608. This does 592, the performance, and the regular RS does 598. Charging also improved by quite a bit. So max charging is now 320 kilowatts instead of 270 in the previous one. And that means 10 to 80% in 18 minutes, which is very quick. All right, so 100 km an hour limit is over. And we hit the throttle. Very quick. We also have ceramic brakes which is just great. So that was that for the Autobahn part. I've got a little navigational route entered to uh, some kind of beautiful road. So we're definitely going to have a little, oh my God, that is so flat. It is insane. So this is the new active suspension uh, that leans into corners and levels out with braking and, and accelerating. Uh, it is really incredible. They've got a hydraulic pump that basically fills up one part of the chamber to make you level in any corner which is super smart and just works so well okay so we've got a lovely road here i think which should allow us to explore the uh, dynamic capabilities of this performance version which yeah you've got such a low center of gravity to begin with and the RS e-tron was already very, very capable. Oh. And this performance version means that they have just dialed everything up a little bit and also try to take into consideration that some people actually just really like to drive and they want to have a nice drive regardless of what they're driving. The fact that it's an electric car doesn't matter. They just want something that handles nicely and this this is really good. They also improved the steering on this facelift model and especially for the performance. And when you go to performance mode, it also uh, affects the cooling strategy, just everything that has to do with driving, basically. This is really good. It just turns in so solidly. It just, just goes wherever you point it, basically. And you, I mean, you don't really feel that weight in corners. It just, it's more in a positive way. Like it feels like it's on rails. Oh, that is a lot of grip. Torque vectoring also changes in this performance mode. Yeah, I don't know if this is like something that transfers on video very well, but the way this thing just hooks up and you can just, in a very fluent manner, just sort of knot all these corners together to make one long ribbon. And honestly, it is, you know, is it as engaging as driving an old school performance car? No, of course not. But it is really, really good. Just objectively speaking, this is very, very good. It stays so flat and cornering speeds are very high. It's so quick. So 0 to 100, 2.5 seconds, which is just ridiculous. That is Bugatti Veyron 
territory. So we've got a B road here, should be able to do a 0 to 100. Voice control. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that is so quick. So we actually did 2.5 seconds. Which is just nuts. And uh, I think if you have warm tires and you lower the tire pressure a little bit, you should be able to do 2.4. Because conditions aren't even optimal. And let's talk a bit about the interior. Because we have a new steering wheel with a flat top and a flat bottom, we've got these new buttons for boost and RS. So this is your driving mode button basically. And this is your push to pass button. So you get full power uh, when you hit that. And as I said, you've got this new camouflage carbon trim which you can also have on the interior only on the performance which I think is very cool the fact that they really pulled that apart still have just the one screen up there and a new display there still have physical buttons for the climate down there which is great beautiful design I really really love it I actually spent a lot of time in the previous RS e-tron because we made some videos about driving to Munich Airport with an RS e-tron and an R8. So I spent a lot of time in the RS e-tron and it's a very, very capable, like long distance cruiser. The interior feels so good. And I also like this design and setup better than the Porsche Taycan. I think this feels a bit more premium and it feels a bit more worth the money. We also have four wheel steering, of course, to make the car feel smaller. Oh, that section is just so nice. Yeah, it, it, there is something very, very satisfying about the way this thing goes round corners. Ooh, a little, little slide there. Braking feel is really good. Brake pedal feel, I should say, is very good. Braking performance is also very good. Yeah, this... This is a car that was already very good and uh, they have improved it slightly on every level. And something I find very noteworthy is that with other manufacturers, when you go for like the top dog of the performance, you lose a lot of range, which in this case is not the case. You don't lose that much, which I think is a, a benefit because normally I always say like, Performance cars and electricity don't match because you know you lose so much range that it just doesn't it doesn't feel worth it to sacrifice that in exchange for a bit more power. But with this one, you don't lose that much. So yeah, I think that is a, a very good development. So we've got this little parking here, which is where I'm going to put it. And let's have a look at the exterior. Uh, so interior you've seen, beautiful sports seats as well. These RS seats, really great. Alcantara headliner, you can go absolutely nuts at Audi Exclusive. Uh, we also saw an Audi R8 V10, which had an Audi Exclusive color and interior. Super, super cool. Please guys, uh, if there's anyone watching who's going to order one of these, make sure you do something special because you can really, really go nuts. You also get this camouflage carbon trim here on the door sill with an illuminated RS logo. And then if you close the door, you can see that the, the car is raised up now, which is like the uh, entry and exit mode. But if you close the door, then the car drops down by a lot. So that's up to 77 millimeters if you're in the lowest setting. You get that rocker panel down there in camouflage carbon as well for the performance. Mirror caps also carbon. And at the front, you also get this trim in the front bumper, this L shape basically uh, for the performance. The regular RS gets that in regular carbon and the S version has a completely different design for the front bumper altogether. Also new headlights, new wheel design. This particular version of this wheel is just for the performance version. There's also another new 20 inch wheel and there's also a different version of this 21 inch wheel. Very nice design. Behind that, carbon ceramics, as I said, really nice. And we've got Pirelli P0s here, 265s at the front. They also have a new Bridgestone available. 
uh, Bedford Green is the color specific for the performance version. They have a couple new colors, but this is my favorite. Really, really like that. And they also have this matte carbon roof available as an option. Very cool. So what else? Well, you can see the lines really well. This color, it just pops out. And you have this very pronounced hip line, which I really like because it gives the car a very broad and muscly character. It's like a, it's a very low and wide car. Super cool. Rear tires are 305s, I think. Yeah, 305s. And then you have the new rear lights. You get a different design for the diffuser as well on the performance version. And again, the camouflage carbon. Forged carbon is what we used to call it, but Audi calls it camouflage carbon. And you have a little reflector here as well. New RS badge as well. And I think that concludes this review. So we did it inverted, reverse this time, Autobahn first, then the B-Road drive, and then the exterior. Let me know what you think, if you prefer this, or if you prefer the regular one. Uh, big thanks to Audi for inviting us to come out and have a go in this gorgeous RS e-tron GT performance. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you at the next one. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video, this playlist, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye.